TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Three Israelis sustained wounds following yet another abhorrent terror attack which plagued the city of Tel Aviv. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant asserts that the time has come to make serious decisions vis-à-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin tells Israel that its independent judiciary is a vital pillar to its relations with the United States. A heinous terror attack plagued Israel's central city of Tel Aviv last night in which three Israelis were shot and wounded before security forces eliminated the Palestinian terrorist. The attack occurred several minutes after 8 p.m. as people were sitting at a cafe in one of Tel Aviv's most bustling streets. A short while ago, a 23-year-old Palestinian resident of Judea and Samaria arrived on Dizengolf Street. This terrorist began opening fire on civilians who were eating a cafe. Three civilians were injured in various conditions. One of them was critically in critical condition, one in severe condition, and one in fair. The terrorist then began running down Dizengolf Street where he was engaged by Israel police forces. The police managed to neutralize this terrorist. The terrorist was pronounced dead on the spot. And because of the professionalism of these police officers, they, mu they managed to thwart a much larger attack from taking place. The Israel police will not allow terrorists to determine the safety of our civilians. Because of ongoing situational assessments, police were in the area, they managed to neutralize this terrorist on the spot, and it, like I said before, managing to thwart a much larger attack from taking place. It's important to highlight that while one of the wounded victims was diagnosed in critical condition, thankfully, medical teams underscore that after extensive medical procedures, he was successfully stabilized. Meanwhile, in the Gaza Strip, the Islamist Hamas organization reacted to the abhorrent attack by praising its perpetrator as a Palestinian hero, while further unashamedly insisting that attacking Israeli civilians was a natural Palestinian reaction to Israel's counter-terror operations against operatives of Hamas and the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad throughout the West Bank. هي رد الفعل الطبيعي من شعبنا ومقاومته على المجازر المتكررة التي يتكبر الاحتلال في كل مدن الضفة الغربية والتي كان آخرها صباح اليوم في جبع قضاء جنين المقاومة حاضرة دائما للرد على جرائم الاحتلال الاحتلال يتحمل المسؤولية الكاملة عن جملة الجرائم التي يرتكبها بحق شعبنا الفلسطيني مضى الوقت الذي يقتل فيه الاحتلال أبناء شعبنا دون رد يوازي حجم جرائمه Meanwhile in Rome, while attending an event at a local synagogue with members of the Jewish community in the Italian capital, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was informed of the terror attack that took place in Tel Aviv, after which he proclaimed to his hosts that in the face of terror, Israel will undoubtedly prevail and will unyieldingly continue to deepen its roots in its ancestral homeland. There's been a, a, another a terror attack in the heart of Tel Aviv tonight. We are, uh, we send uh, first of all our hopes uh, and our, uh, our wishes for the uh, uh, speedy recovery of the wounded and we strengthen the security forces and the police who are fighting terrorists this night and every night. We will continue to uh, build our nation, to deepen our roots uh, and to build our common future as brothers and sisters. Following Netanyahu's meeting with members of the Jewish community in Rome, the Israeli premier was joined by Italy's Minister of Industry and Trade, Adolfo Urso, at the Italian Economic Forum, during which he announced Jerusalem's keen interest in ratcheting up its exports of liquid natural gas, or LNG, to Italy in particular, and Europe in general. You mentioned uh, gas, uh, Minister. Uh, we are already cooperating in gas with uh, your national company, uh, but we want to expand it. I think we should look very carefully and quickly at the possibility of adding an LNG facility, perhaps in Cyprus, to increase uh, Israel's export capacities of gas to Italy and from Italy to Europe. I think this is uh, obviously uh, a strategic need of Italy and Europe, and Israel is prepared to 
do more with you uh, for that end. Uh, that would also connect the connector. The, uh, uh, Israel wants to be on the electronic grid. It's a fairly uh, small investment, relatively uh, speaking, that would enable us to use your surpluses and you to use our surpluses uh, to, better, uh, uh, to, to, to better use uh, energy. Netanyahu further noted Italy's recent struggles with the lack of water, grappling with lengthy periods of drought, which has historically been a source of instability throughout countries in the eastern Mediterranean and beyond. Water is another area. I know that you've been suffering droughts uh, recently. Uh, I want you to know that for thousands of years, thousands of years, the Middle East uh, had water wars. The last water war we had was actually the Six-Day War in which uh, the Syrians tried to divert the headwaters of the Jordan. It's one of the reasons, one of the things that led to the Six-Day War. Well, we don't have a water problem anymore because if we need water, we simply produce it. How do we produce it? First, we recycle. The recycling of water in Israel is about 90 percent of the wastewater, and we use it for agriculture and other needs. Uh, the next, the runner-up uh, uh, in recycling water is Spain with about 20 percent. 90 percent, 20 percent, I think it's considerably lower in Italy. We are eager to share our recycling uh, experiences and technologies with you. Returning to Israel, where U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin concluded his visit to the country after holding a lengthy meeting with his Israeli counterpart Yoav Gallant. In a subsequent joint press conference, Defense Minister Gallant told his visiting counterpart that Israel deeply appreciates its powerful bond with the United States, which includes deep defense ties that have, under the leadership of Secretary Austin, reached new heights. Jerusalem's top defense official further noted that their meeting focused on countering threats of the Islamic Republic of Iran and that the time has come to make pressing and important decisions. Today, we find ourselves at a critical point in time. In the coming period, we will need to make pressing and important decisions. Iran aims to gain nuclear weapons and threaten not only Israel, but the entire world. Mr. Secretary, it is our duty to take all measures necessary to prevent Iran from gaining nuclear weapon. The Iranian nuclear threat requires us to be prepared for every course of action. I repeat and emphasize, we must be prepared for every course of action. Minister Gallant went on to stress the threatening consequences of a nuclear-armed Iran, which would be to the detriment of both Israel and the United States, as well as the entire world, while further highlighting the heavy mission that rests upon their shoulders. Mr. Secretary, as the son of Holocaust survivors, I am fully aware of the heavy mission that rests on my shoulders, on our shoulders. We must do everything in our power to ensure that the dreams of the Ayatollahs are never fulfilled at any cost. Secretary Austin, for his part, reiterated the unwavering commitment of the United States to the security of the State of Israel. America's commitment to Israel's security is ironclad, and it's going to stay that way. As President, President Biden said on his visit to Israel last year, the connection between the Israeli people and the American people is bone deep. Austin went on to note Washington's concern over Jerusalem's judicial reform, stressing that an independent judiciary is a pillar in the bond between the United States and Israel. Our bond is rooted in far more than just shared interest. It's rooted in the shared values of democracy and freedom and the rule of law. And those values remain essential. As President Biden has said, the genius of, democracy, of American democracy 
and Israeli democracy is that they are both built on strong institutions, on checks and balances, and on an independent judiciary. And the President also noted that building consensus for fundamental changes is really important to ensure that the people buy into them so they can be sustained. Washington's top Pentagon official continued by addressing the Biden administration's position vis-a-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran, including its unceasing determination that diplomacy remains its preferred option to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. With that being said, Secretary Austin emphasized Washington's concerns of a deepening strategic partnership between Tehran and Moscow and urged Jerusalem to do more in support of enabling Ukraine defend itself against Russia. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and God willing, we'll see you again on Monday at the same time.